Hey everybody, welcome to World History. This is our last section of notes for chapter 30. So go ahead and get your notes out and let's get started. So, the end of the Cold War. The Soviet Union is going to begin to decline due to flaws in its system. Collective agriculture wasn't productive and Russia had to massively import grain. And Soviet consumer goods were inferior to Western markets. Due to inefficiency, waste, and huge bureaucracy that produced unneeded goods, the Soviet economy was failing. <coughs> Goodness, excuse me. The burden of military commitments is also going to massively impact their economy. Trying to match the U.S. in the arms race, the production of all military hardware left few resources for day-to-day -day lives of the Soviet people. People were struggling to find housing. They were starving. Everything was going wrong. And the Soviets are going to have their own Vietnam and Afghanistan, like we talked about last time. Vietnam was not exactly a good thing for the U.S. The Soviets are going to have their own version with Afghanistan. In 1979, they're going to become involved in an Afghanistan conflict, which is long and costly. Soviets had backed the Afghan government and enacted land reforms and redistribution, but the landlords in the region took up arms against the government. The Soviets are going to step in and heavy casualties would ensue against the Mujahideen. These are Muslim religious warriors who were backed by the United States. This was another major blow to this communist empire because things were not going well for the Soviet Union. They got their butts handed to them by these religious warriors. So the empire is going to begin to crumble, especially by 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev's in power and is going to want reform. He's going to pull troops from Afghanistan and sign a new arms treaty, which called for glasnost, or openness, and perestroika, the reconstruction of the government and economy, and moved towards limited private enterprise. With this, reforms are going to lead to unrest and soaring prices. Some factories couldn't survive without government help and closed and led to high unemployment. Those whose jobs were threatened denounced the reforms, and many demanded radical changes to go back to what it had been before. Some Eastern European nations also ceased this period of unrest to get their independence. The Soviets also staged a failed coup. Gorbachev's going to resign, and as a result, the Soviet Union's going to break into 12 independent nations. Bye-bye. The Soviet Union's gone. Now, this is going to transform Eastern Europe. During Soviet rule, unrest and revolts were common in Eastern Europe. Eastern Bloc nations demanded freedom and resented Russian rule. By 1982, Poland's surge of resistance helped pave the way for Eastern European independence, especially under the leadership of Lech Walesa, a leader of the Polish ship shipyard and a former Solidarity Labor Union. Well, excuse me, they're going to form a Solidarity Labor Union. He's going to be arrested, but becomes a national hero who demanded political change. Eastern German leaders are also going to resist these changes, especially when Hungary opened their border with Austria and thousands of East Germans fled to West Germany to get away from communism. One by one, communist governments across Europe fell. People wanted reform. In Berlin, the Berlin Wall's gates were going to be open and the wall came down. We also have Václav Havel, a dissident activist who was elected president in Czechoslovakia, with the nation peacefully dividing into two separate countries in 1992. This of Nikolai Kogescu, or Romania's longtime dictator who refused to step down, who's going to be overthrown and executed. Communism is going to decline worldwide. Some regimes are going to reform, mainly in places like China, Vietnam, North Korea, and Cuba. China is going to allow some compromises with capitalism that allowed their economy to boom, but there's no major political reforms. Vietnam opened up to the world and became a major hub of tourism and coffee exportation. North Korea, no main changes. They're going to just remain isolated. Cuba is going to have their economy decline without the Soviets, and U.S. imposed sanctions on their economy isn't going to help either. But those are the major ones. The U.S. was widely recognized as the only remaining superpower after the Cold War. Americans seemed unsure of their proper role in the world. Were we the world leader in the military? Some Americans didn't want to be the world's police. Some believed the U.S. should play a bigger role in world's affairs. America's unrivaled power produced mixed reactions around the world. Some continued to the U.S. as a protector of freedom. People in many parts uh, less pleased to see any single nation become so powerful saw it as one big country just trying to take power. And it's not going to go well in their minds. But that is actually it for notes for this chapter. So you do need to turn your notes in, 
and whatever time you have left in class after watching this, I need you to work on your review guides. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.